Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Well, you know, the plan was today that it was going to be warmer and I was going to say, get to say things like, well, spring is on the way and we're thinking about working in our yards and uh, I was going to give you a few tips. Well, it's snow flurried all day today, but it's still, the warm weather's still coming. And this is when a lot of people like to do a lot of yard work and improve their backyard feeder stations. And uh, one of the biggest parts of our business here, uh, of course, are uh, shepherd's hooks and poles and deck arms and things like that. Ways to display Display and hang your bird feeders for your birds uh, and we have a couple of different pole systems uh, set up so I thought I would kind of explain that to you because sometimes it's a little uh, confusing when it comes to uh, which one you should because we get asked a lot you know what what kind of pole systems right for my yard first rule of thumb make sure uh, if you're trying to keep squirrels off of your poles Remember that the location of your poles are important. They need to be at least eight to 10 feet away from any jumping platform. So that'd be your deck railing. That could be a bird bath. That could be a tree limb. Uh, so if you're, if you're talking about anti-squirrel, that's the first rule of thumb. But the rest of these uh, poles, when we're talking about it, they're kind of universally applied to that, that rule there. So uh, when the ground is softer, it, 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 you can, it, Get your poles in the ground a lot easier. The most basic pole of all is something like this. This is a hummingbird pole, a, a shepherd's hook, if you will. And this one just pushes down into the ground. It's very flimsy. It's not st very stable at all. But a hummingbird feeder is a very light feeder. And you can use this in a lot of situations when it comes to like putting it in your flower bed so that your hummingbird feeder hangs over your, your flowers. Um, this, as a bird feeder pole, as far as seed feeders and things like that, I don't recommend them for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is, of course, the stability of it, and the other is that it is uh, too low to the ground. Um, hummingbird feeders you can place in flower beds where cats can't really sit underneath your pole. Uh, and, and under bird feeder poles, a lot of times cats will just sit on the ground under them, let the birds get used to them sitting there, and then they'll jump up and grab the birds off of your feeders if it's too low. So this is not a great example of a, a, a feeder pole that I like to hang uh, seed feeders from. So this one is the most basic one. And then in that line of shepherd hooks, the root's going to have to pan a little bit here, but these are the traditional shepherd hooks that I think you think of in garden stores and things like that. And these are also foot sink onto the ground, and they have two uh, feet that go into the ground. And so it, whenever we're standing here in the store, the, the pole looks taller than it normally would be, or it will be when you get it in the ground. You're going to lose about 10 inches of height on these. So they'll be, the arms will be down here more so than they are way up there. But these feeder poles actually have a little spade in the bottom of them too, uh, between the legs. So they're a little more stable. But these shepherd hooks are still not as stable as I like my bird feeder poles to be, especially here in the Midwest where the wind is a mighty factor because what happens whenever you put your bird feeders on here, especially if it's a little bit heavier bird feeder, uh, the wind will blow that feeder back and forth and it will, no matter how stable that little spade may make it, is you're gonna get rocking back and forth, especially in the soft topsoil where, where most of your feeders are, are anchored into. And the next thing you know, you're gonna look out and your poles can be leaning a little bit to the left or to the right and you wanna go out and you readjust it and everything. So uh, they're good poles. They're, but you're going to have issues with stability if you've got strong winds, especially the heavier the bird feeder uh, that you put on there. Now, as a rule of thumb, I like these. I only like to use tube feeders on, which have a, a good degree of wind resistance. The wind cuts around them versus a hopper type feeder or something that may sway in the wind more. But if you want a really good bird feeder pole system, you want to go with at least a one inch diameter pole. And I'm going to bring you over here. Uh, these one inch diameter poles made by Irva, a company, a company out of Chicago, really well built. Um, and they are uh, one inch uh, diameter poles and they come in three different heights for your you know, different needs. Of course, I'm six foot tall, so you can see the height of these poles. You have a, a shorter one that a lot of people mainly use for uh, bird houses or flat top feeders that, that sit on top of this. And then you got the 74 inch and then you got the 80 inch and all of them have their advantages and their disadvantages. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the different
and eight steps you need to go through when it comes to building these. And we'll show you more of them over here when we pan to the left. But the first thing that you really need to decide on is your anchor system and how that pole is going to get into your ground. Um, the number one seller in our store by far is something called a twister. And this is a, a, an auger, if you will. And you can see this one, uh, I like to start by twisting it into the ground about a third of the way and then put my level on it, make sure it's going in good straight and then twist it in a little bit more. And this is ground level. So the height of that pole that I just showed you is going to be the exact height it is above the ground. Now there is a nice little hole all the way through uh, here uh, where, where you can put like a screwdriver through there and help you twist it in the ground. It's actually easier than you think. Now you don't want to do it when they rock, the, the ground is rock hard, but as the ground is thawing and softening up, these are much easier to get in the ground. And then that pole slides in and you tighten it down so it and it's very solid. I've had mine in my yard for about 15 years now. Um, so they are in it, they're leaning a little bit now. We were just talking about redoing the feeder station in the backyard because at 15 years old, it's ready to have some stuff interchanged out of there. But this is not the only anchor system. We also have what are called ground sockets. And this, you drive this whole thing into the ground until about an inch sticks out of the ground. Now you never wanna hit this directly with a hammer. You always want to put a block of wood on top of it as you're driving this into the ground and then your pole one inch pole slides inside of it now this is great too because in both of these systems you actually can take your pole out and, 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 and you, if you need to so that having that socket i've actually had people put two of these in the ground uh very close together so that whenever they're mowing they can actually pull it out of one, stick it in the other, and mow over it, you know, if they got it really close to the ground, and then move it back and forth. And then they put a little, or a sock or something in it so that it doesn't fill with water and things like that. There's different things you can do. So your anchor system is important. I do want to mention that you can also uh, put these poles on your patio. They do make patio plates, which are big metal pieces this big. Um, that are pretty stable that you can put your poles in, but and those I recommend putting some extra weight on top of those patio plates again, especially here in the Midwest where the <laughs> Midwest wind is so vicious. So you've got your anchor, you've got your height, you've chose the height of the pole for uh, what you want to use it for. So and then you need a topper. You need to top your. So Ruth's going to have to pan up again because we have some examples of it. We have three prong heads that fit down inside of the top of the. Uh, the pole, and this is an 80 inch pole here in front of us. And then uh, this is called an extended reach three prong head. And then just to our left, we have like a two prong head. And some people like this one because they can actually stack another two prong head inside of it. So you got, you've got four heads there. Now, whenever I put these on, I like to get some black electrical tape and wrap it around where they fit together and where they fit into the pole because a really strong wind and your bird feeders on here that you can it can twist in the wind. So that's why I like to wrap some of black, black electrical tape around there to help uh, stabilize that. And then they also come with a little nice, pretty decorative finial that goes into the top of them. So uh, the, the other choice, of course, is flat top feeders, like the one a little bit further over to the left, this fly through. And so they have these mounting plates for them that you can drill into the bottom of your bird feeder and it fits flat on the top of your feet. And so these poles don't need to be very high because if you have the 80 inch pole with a flat top, obviously getting bird seed into it can be quite difficult. So uh, they, they, you match the, the product with what you need to do. Now, when you, if you've ever watched my video on keeping deer out of bird feeders, you know I talk about six feet in height. You're not, you need to get your feeders up at least six feet. So. You know, I'm six foot tall, so the bottom of that feeder needs to be about the top of my head here. And so one that would hang here too low, then you, what you would need to do is you might would need to extend the height of that pole a little bit. And so these poles also, you can use extensions. And well, that will slide in the top of your pole, and then you put your topper on top of that. So you can make this 80-inch pole into a 92-inch pole. Now, you don't want to get too high, obviously, with, ever, with the, uh, the wind that we have here in the area. But... That's important. You can get the height up there, but raccoons and squirrels, we have baffles. And these fit, uh, or there's a couple, three different styles that fit, and, and you can put them on and off. The, one of the great things about these poles that have the heads you can take off of them is you can slide these torpedo type baffles down on top of them, like this one. 
And what you have, what they come with, is a collar like this that actually slides down and you tighten it down. And then you slide your baffle down on top of it and it rests on top of the four screws here. So incredibly well-built systems, very efficient. They last a long, long time. Uh, they're very, very strong. And when you have something, when you have this much in the ground below, you, you, you can imagine that's going to be a lot more stable than just putting, you know, some foot sunk into the ground or just a few inches in the ground when the wind blows. This is going to be very solid, especially if it gets to bite into some clay uh, in your yard, then it gets really, really stable. So, it, you know, we get asked about these pole systems all the time. And Ruth coined the phrase erector sets for adults many years ago for us. And, and that, we've used that ever since. I mean, you can add uh, all kind of components to them. We have uh, clip on arms. We have uh, oriole feeders that snap onto these poles. We have bird bass that can snap onto these poles. Uh, you know, so they're very versatile and you can arrange them as many in your yard as you want to, um, but they are very, very well built and we highly recommend them for a, a good, strong pole setup. You'll be thankful in the long run to last a lot longer and you won't get the leaning and things like that. So pole systems they're very important every backyard needs them you know there's very few situations where a pole won't do you good you know we also do programs on deck arms and things like that but that's the pole system setup we get so many questions about all the time so great idea for a program hope you liked it give us a like give us a share if you're on youtube please subscribe until then come on let's talk birds